the word at this time. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are like grass. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are like grass, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's advance to the sermon portion, if you would, Gary, and um, have us... um, Think about this sermon series, This Way to Christmas, today called Dance in the Dark, on this second Sunday of Advent. Imagine, uh, if you will, a uh, Hebrew slave who had been led off to Babylon. Call him Levi. Imagine him sitting uh, with his head buried in his hands in uh, deep grief. The people of Judah that had held out so long against the Assyrian Empire were finally no match for the onslaught of the Babylonians. And now all of the ancient kingdom of Israel was destroyed. The temple demolished. The people either massacred, including Levi's family, or now enslaved like Levi himself in Babylon. But then, in the midst of despair, Levi's darkness is pierced by a word. He doesn't know where the word comes from or where it's going, but it rings clear. Comfort ye. The name Isaiah means that the Lord is salvation. If you're filling in your homework and your um, information card, you'll notice that um, that's the first blank and Think about that for a moment. The name Isaiah means the Lord is salvation. It does help to hear a little Joseph Friedrich Handel when we think about Isaiah. Handel was described by some as the Shakespeare of the Bible because of the poetry that we hear throughout the book. Um, our life groups are going to spend some time looking at some different passages, but today we hear that uh, 
that, that refrain from the recitative of Handel's Messiah, every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill laid low, and so on. The beautiful poetry that is the word of the Lord from the prophet Isaiah. I borrowed the title, uh, Dance in the Dark, from a, a piece that was written in the Christian century by this wonderful pastor, Otis Moss, who serves uh, an incredible church on the south side of Chicago, Trinity United Church of Christ. It's unlike any uh, megachurch I've ever been to. It's, it's truly a megachurch. They'll have maybe as many as 6,000 people worshiping there this morning. But it's uh, right in the heart of this deeply impoverished area surrounded by populations of people that are uh, stymied by 25% unemployment, where 40% of the adult men will end up in prison. There he preaches the word of the Lord. And his article was called Dance in the Dark. Now the title today could just as well have been Desert points the way to Christmas, or maybe Christmas arises out of the desert. I want you to think about this stark difference or sort of uh, juxtaposition of, of this scene in the Bible today and this time of year that we worship God. Here we are surrounded by lovely greenery. So many people have worked so hard to make the church look pretty, and uh, the green that that is just an expression of this lovely uh, climate in which we live in, where there's plenty of water and, and growing things. But Isaiah speaks in a very different time and place. Out of the fertile valleys of the Jordan, where the people of God had cent centered in the land, settled in the land of Israel, they were conquered by the Babylonian Empire and carted off to slavery. And the passage was uh, many, many months through the desert, through the desert into a dry land of Babylon. And there they had been led. Judy Lee Tarbox brought us a little terrarium of the desert to help us think about how Christmas arises out of the desert. It's important to think about that context, dance in the dark, is the thought, Christmas emerging out of the desert. It's because Isaiah's message came to a people who were miserable in exile. They had survived the attack by Babylon, but no doubt many of them wished they had died, having survived their loved ones, wondering if it would have been better to no longer be alive this Advent uh, season and these scriptures that are brought to us by the ancient church, we are a, a congregation that, that is an echo of our brothers and sisters in the Catholic experience, the universal followers of Christ in the world, and we follow an ancient lectionary that, that brings up scriptures that have been read in, and celebrated in the people of God for hundreds and hundreds of years. But we might wonder why in the midst of all of the green and all of the um, season that, that is saying celebrate, 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 why do we have these very uh, serious scripture that almost force us to slow down and think deeply and contemplate and reflect on life? Well, think about the context in which we live. Is everything holly and jolly as we worship in this week of San Bernardino that reminds us of 9-11 and France not quite a month ago? Is everything a season of happiness. Closer to home, Christmas comes and there are souls who do not feel joy. Joy? They ask, I am just missing my loved one. Joy? I don't feel joy. I can't afford half of these things that are being advertised. Joy? 
oh, sure, I can afford more things, but my loved ones don't need more stuff. They need God. They need the fruits of the Spirit that come with a living relationship with God. They need peace and patience and perseverance and self-control and kindness and gentleness. Those are the gifts I wish I could give my loved ones. Peace, the prophet cries, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Well, whatever uh, our situation is during this Advent season, Isaiah speaks in an incredibly powerful word of God to us that invites us to name the emptiness as an expression of faith. Now, this is key. This is what Isaiah is doing or what God is doing through the prophet Isaiah, inviting God's people to name the emptiness as an expression of faith. It's very misleading to live as a person of faith in this world because a lot of times we're told or led to believe if you really have Jesus, you're just always going to walk around with a smile. You're always going to greet one another who says, how are you? And you'll say, I'm blessed. We are, um, are told by the surrounding culture that... Um, that you just need to put a smile on and celebrate. And, um, and if you don't, you're a Grinch or something like that. But Isaiah speaks quite differently. God, through Isaiah, speaks quite differently and says to us, name the emptiness as an expression of faith. Now, in your uh, life group homework, that sheet that you should have found in your um, at one pages, you'll see that there are literally a couple of lines there that invite you to fill in the blanks because I can't fill them in for you. I can't name the condition or the emptiness or the void that is existing very personally for you or for which God has given you a heart to see in this world. Um, but, but I want to invite you now to take some time of quiet and contemplation to literally name the emptiness. Maybe it's literally someone's name. Maybe it's a condition, a situation, uh, to write it down because, um, as Jesus said, when we name the demons, they lose power and uh, when we are covered by the Holy Spirit. So take a little time to do that now. Grab a pencil in your pew pocket or steal one from a neighbor. Name the emptiness. And uh, I'll give you a little music to accompany your quiet time.
why bother? That's what um, the people of God were asking in exile. Why bother remembering God? Why bother telling God's story? And in fact, um, that very question was bouncing around the heart of Isaiah himself. If you read the text uh, more carefully, you realize that Isaiah is struggling with what God wants him to do. The subtitle of uh, Pastor uh, Otis Moss's article on Dance in the Dark said, uh, Preaching the Blues without despair, preaching the blues without despair. Isaiah is struggling with what God wants him to do as a preacher. If you get to the first uh, few chapters of Isaiah and you get to chapter 5, you, you read about Isaiah's struggle there as well with being, pro, being uh, proclaimed as a preacher of God. But here, Isaiah is complaining and he, he, he says, a voice cries out, what do I cry out? All people are like grass. They wither and fade. Isaiah is looking around himself at the devastation of Israel, knowing of the destruction of Jerusalem and the massacres and the suffering, and saying, cry out, what do you want me to cry out, God? All people are like grass that wither and fade in the dry desert where all around seems to be death. But then in our scripture, the Lord responds to Isaiah and says, Yes, you are right. People are like grass that wither and fade. But remember this. The word of the Lord endures forever. And that's the, uh, the key message that God gave the prophet Isaiah and wants us to hear today. The word of the Lord endures forever. Remember that, that that's a loaded little word, that word, word. Advent is pointing the way to Christmas, but remember that the one who is finally the Word lived among us, and He endures forever. Remember that He gives us His Spirit, and when we receive Him, as we will have opportunity again to do today in the sacrament, when we receive Him, He gives power. To become his children. Remember that that word lives in you and we live in him. And as God points the way to Christmas in the midst of Advent, God is instilling hope in people who can find life to be very hopeless. It's the power of God who creates out of nothing who gives life where there is no life. It's the power of God even to bring life out of death. Last Christmas um, was the first for one of our members who was missing a loved one who had died that year. And um, anniversaries of... um, you know, a loved one's birthday or, or a holiday without a loved one are always tough, but there's something about that first Christmas or that first birthday that are especially hard. And um, the reality is, you know, in Advent, all the fa-la-la in the world is not going to take away the ache in someone's heart. And it was true for that person, and yet... Um, She was invited by someone to come to our blue Christmas 
gathering, the one that we have on the 15th here at Tomond in an evening at Bethel. And, um, and so she summoned the energy, even though she didn't really want to do it. She summoned the energy to go because her loved ones just said, we're not going to let you sit there by yourself. We want you to come. And uh, there, surrounded by a community of faith, many of whom had somehow found the courage to name their own emptiness, they found Christ who met them there. That's what God does. That's what Advent wants us to remember in the midst of all of the stuff. The heart of the season is God meets humanity here on earth in the realities of life and to be reminded that only God can fill the emptiness. Be opened. As God points the way to Christmas, be opened. And, and, and now um, let God take God's rightful place in your life. This is the way to Christmas.